in a few weeks from now, India's biggest ever initial public offer, that of the Life Insurance Corporation of India, is about to be launched. Given the uh, scale of the institution, the uh, the reputation it has among a vast segment of India's population and the consequences it will have for policy holders and for the general public, this becomes a very important issue. Now, in the last year, significant changes have been made to the structure and the character of the Life Insurance Corporation of India. So, although this is a uh, an offer of just about 5% of the stake in the IPO, the consequences are potentially very serious. Now, I have with me Mr. Amanullah Khan, a veteran uh, uh, employee in the life insurance industry, life insurance corporation of India itself, and President a former president of the All India Insurance Employees Association, the largest insurance union in India. Uh, so, uh, what, what is it? we have had the valuation done by uh, the valuer uh, that is the Milliman and Company, and it has been estimated at 5.4 lakh crores. Now. What does that imply for policyholders and especially in terms of the methodology that has been adopted? Yeah, thank you, Sridhar. Oh. I think LIC is a unique organization. There are two former finance ministers on record. One, Mr. P. Chidambaram, who said LIC is a jewel in the crown. And then we have Arun Jaitley calling LIC as the most important uh, financial institution for the economy of the country. Unfortunately, the government is now making hectic preparations for the, the public offer of LIC. Though the government says that it is 5% of its stake that will be sold initially, we see it as a first step towards privatization. And that is why my organization, All India Insurance Employees Association, has been campaigning against the LIC IPO. Now the question, how do you determine the value mm. of a corporation which never valued itself? Right from 1956, LIC has been generating surplus. And that surplus was being distributed among the shareholder and the policyholder in a particular ratio. It never valued yes. itself. Yeah, one of now, the one of the reasons is supposed to be that a conservative valuation gave it protection against future uncertainties. That was one of the logic of not having to value it at market rates. Yeah, no, it it was never valued. Yes. So only we were determining actuarial surplus for the distribution. Yeah. Yeah. Now with the government deciding on IPO the value of the corporation has to be determined. determined. Yeah. They have appointed uh, a US uh, actuarial firm, Milliman Advisors. The net asset value of a, any insurance company, that is what is embedded value. Yeah. And they have determined it as 5.4 lakh crores. Yeah. Now the reason I asked you about the valuation itself was that uh, the assets of the LIC, especially given that LIC is perhaps the biggest realtor in India, uh, have been taken at book value. And these don't, uh, if I remember right, it's something like 3,500 crores, which is uh, laughable because uh, we know that according to one estimate, it is at least uh, the market value of the assets are nothing less than 10 lakh crores. See, we do not know what is the value, market value of the LIC's uh, land mm. and its building. Yes. But it is a fact that LIC after railways is the largest yes. real estate yes. owner. Yeah. Now, according to our information, all the buildings that are self-occupied have been valued at book value. Yes. Because they do not generate any profit. Correct. 
so that is why the value of the assets the mm. fixed assets has come down yes so this is one of the issue on which we are agitating yes. the value of our real estate yes. is much larger yeah. many times more than what is assessed yeah, yeah, now yeah, 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 yeah. and it is uh, yeah not right to say that uh, yeah. the self occupied buildings yes. have to be valued at uh, book value yes because also from an ownership perspective if you say five your this float is 5% and 5% of this institution is belong going to belong to somebody then uh, then that means they have claims over 5% of all that lic owns so notionally this asset should be valued because then somebody is losing Uh, if these assets are being valued at uh, such a low price and somebody is getting ownership of that asset uh, you know then uh, some people some people are losing and some people are gaining from this no well, that is absolutely right see uh, the fact is that unlike any other public sector undertakings yeah. lic has grown and expanded itself through the policy holders funds Correct. the government after the initial investment of 5 crore as equity has never given any additional capital Correct. to lic Correct. except to meet uh, the ird regulation in 2011 yeah. when another 95 crores were added which was also generated internally uh, but interesting fact is that in 1956 when uh, the government invested 5 crores in lic it also passed on the liability of compensating the erstwhile insurers yes. the 245 yes. companies yes. that yes were taken up by the government yeah. now in fact that the value that lic has paid as compensation exceeds the capital invested by the government correct so mm. as on a particular day 5.12 Five crore was paid as compensation to the asphal insurers, yeah. and all that has been done through the policyholders' funds. Yes, yes. So now we feel that uh, the government, which did not create the value, yeah. it is the policyholders' yes. value, yeah. which is uh, being appropriated, being appropriated yes. by a few rich people in the country. Yeah. and that is the tragedy that we have so can you just explain what are the consequences for policy holders uh, the if if they are the ones who have contributed to the growth i mean uh, almost all of the growth has been generated from policy holders funds what in what way does this ipo uh, attack those their interests see 1956 when lic was established the finance minister on the floor of the parliament cd deshmukh yeah. he said that with the nationalization the concept of profit goes out yes and the service comes in yeah. and lic has to serve the people yeah. and make the insurance available and at the same time uh, through mobilization of the small savings help the national development right. now the scheme of thing was that which was no nowhere else in the world you can find this that whatever surplus actual surplus is determined 95% of that was going to the policy holders and 5% was going to the government and interestingly any insurance company including the life insurance it sells two type of policies one is a participating policy where there is no guarantee of a future return and a non participating policy where guarantees are given for the return so the participating policies participate in the profits of the corporation and that is distributed to them correct by way of reversionary bonus yes. uh and interestingly in lic the participating policy holders yes. were also getting 95% of the profits made from the non participating policies 95 5% goes to the government okay uh, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. 5 5 5% goes to the government because the entire distribution yes. pattern was 95 5 yeah. out of the total profits earned from the non participating policies 95% was going to the policy holder okay. 
and in the same way the participating policy holders were also taking the risk yes. that if there is a loss in the non participating yeah. policies yes. that risk will be so, borne by the participating so one of the unique things about the lic was that it was also in a in a country like india where what it was doing was that it was uh, it, it was providing a savings instrument for people especially people from uh, poorer and uh, medium sized uh, incomes uh, to participate in savings which could then be invested in long term investments no like infrastructure and so on yeah. see that is the beauty of lic as such because the people who purchase a policy of lic uh, they do not take it as a pure risk instrument yes. they also take it as a savings right. instrument because after all a life insurance company has to cover the risk of dying early right. and also has to cover the risk of living longer right. Right. so most of the yes. policy holders were taking it as a savings instrument yes and when the savings take place smaller savings yes. and today lic generates as much as between 4 lakhs to 5 lakh crore annual investable uh, surplus yeah. so that is invested in the economy and basically it is invested in areas uh, which give benefit to the entire society correct and that was the objective of nationalization yeah. and in fact that if you go through the act of 1956 lic act uh, in many places it says that lic should act as a trust correct 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 so the government's role was essentially that like a like of a trustee rather than a shareholder in actual practice isn't that uh, that is right because the entire scheme of things the policy holders were privileged over the shareholders yes, yes. and the way it was set up and the policy holders were taking the risk yes of losses right. and helping the expansion of the industry so yes. it was working as a trust and a mutual benefit yes. society yes so how is that endangered by the the ipo and the 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 changes in the character of the lic that have been instituted since last year uh, how do these uh, affect policy holders no apart the, from the 95 uh, yeah the, no the government has brought certain uh, amendments to the lic act and these amendments have been brought through the finance bill yes. in fact yes. as we were contesting that lic is a special act yeah. uh, whether the finance bill yeah. can uh, alter correct this act yes and we also represented to the lok sabha speaker but yes. nothing much was done hmm. and in fact that by doing that all opportunity for a discussion exactly. was uh, yes denied yes and now that act has been amended yes. and basically most of the amendments are in relation to the management of the right. appointment of independent directors and separation of powers between a chairperson making it fall in line chair, with the chairperson or cmd yeah. Yeah. falling in line with the company but there are two important uh, yeah okay. issues in those amendments number one the share capital is increased from 100 crores yes uh to 25000 crores yes. authorized capital correct now the issued capital is uh, 6325 yes. crores and the second amendment is in relation to the distribution of the surplus correct. earlier lic was maintaining a single fund yeah. comprising yes. of uh, money received from both non participating and participating correct. policies no they have been separated yes. and after separation of those funds the amendment to the act also says that the participating policy holders now will get only 90% of the surplus yes. and they are not going they will not be entitled to any profit that is generated from the non participating policies in fact in fact uh, the draft red herring prospectus when we see it you can see this increase in embedded value from uh, in in march 2021 it was about 0.9 lakh crores 
and it suddenly it increases to 5.39 lakh crores yeah. in uh, yes, September. Yes, and that is primarily because of this. Yeah, that is primarily because because. now that the full charge is taken over on the non-participatory policies is going straight away into the shareholders account and nothing is to go to the policy holders. That's right. As, as at the end of March yes. 2021, uh, it was a single fund yes. because these amendments yes. had not come into okay. effect. Uh, Embedded value is that what is the interest of the shareholder? Yes, yes. So that interest of the shareholder with a single fund came to around one lakh four thousand crores. Yes. yes. Yeah. But after these amendments came into effect from first of July, this LIC was asked to separate the fund. Yes. Participating and non-participating. Correct. Correct. And with the uh, reduction of the share of the participating policyholders yeah. to ninety percent. And denying them the returns from the non-participating policies, the shareholder interest yes. increase, yes. Yes. increase, yes. and that is how that as on September the value of uh, the shareholder interest increased to around 5.4 lakh crore. Correct. This in in fact it is the robbery of the yes. policy holders, the participating policy holders yes. Yes. who. Who funded LIC's growth? Yeah. Who contributed to the solvency margin of LIC, yeah, yeah. and who also undertook the risk yeah. if there is a loss from the non-participating policies? Mm -hmm. They have been short chain now, yeah. and that is so. So this this rather naive uh, argument that uh, this is only a five percent float, so it is not going to affect policyholders much. Uh, what do you say to that? No, the, see if you read the entire act, the government has the sanction from the parliament to divest forty nine percent of the shares, and looking at the politics and the economics today, we know that it is not going to remain that, and there will be increasing demand for the government to get out of LIC itself, uh, because the prospect to shareholders. For them, it is not the service to the community; it is the profit. Yes. And the moment the government retains certain control, mm -hmm. the market always downgrade those companies. Yes. They, they yes. don't get the values. Yes. Yes. And a classic example is SBI and HDFC. Yes. When you look at SBI, its market share, customer base. And reach and expand is many many times more than HDFC Bank. Yes. But HDFC Bank market capitalization is larger than four public sector banks put together, including SPI. Correct. Correct. So that shareholders, if they Correct. want their value to increase, mm. they want government to step back. Yes. The yes. government. Already you can hear that in the no yeah. that noise. Yeah, that, yeah, no. Already that noise yes. is coming. The LIC chairman yes. has said uh, has given yes. assurances yes. that uh, it will be a board managed company. There will be no government interference and all of that. Uh, supposedly to assuage fears that uh, it will not behave uh, properly in yeah. the market. <laughs> no, basically, no. See, LIC is board managed. Yes. But uh, when the government owns the company, you can't avoid the interference of the government. Yes. So in the day-to-day -day functioning, there is no interference. Yes. But sometimes the interference will be there on the investment policy, yeah. and especially uh, in situation where, in the last few years, if you have seen, uh, whenever government went for a disinvestment, uh, yes, yeah, drive, uh, most of those shares. Did not sell in the market, and LIC had to intervene to purchase that, Correct. including HAL in Bangalore, yeah. uh, GIC Re, yes. and then you know, uh, New India, Correct. and many yeah. even yeah. ONGC. Yes. Yes. ONGC. Yes. When market was not purchasing it, LIC was asked to intervene Correct. and purchase. Correct. 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 So the market does not see that as a favorable thing, yes. Yes. and they want the government to get out of the business. Yeah. So we are sure that. Uh, Government, though it assured that it will hold 51 percent, 
it will not remain for long yes and we already experienced it in the bank yeah. and in the general insurance yes. there is already talk that they will be coming to the market again next year for another float the, the, the finance ministry officials have said it that no, uh, no that is possible if you look at the sebi rules yeah. the sebi says within 2 years yeah you have to disinvest 10% correct now they are doing a disinvestment of 5% so within the next 2 years they have to disinvest 10% Yeah. and within 5 years they have to disinvest 25% correct so that is as per the sebi rules yes, yes, yes. that the government yeah. will because the government is perennially in need of funds yes. they are going so to when do, do you think uh, when do you uh, as as the as a plan uh, when do you think that 49% will be reached according to the schedule the government is not going to have that easy because of the very value of lic yes so whether the market has got the appetite to absorb yeah absorb and even uh, today even with 5% they say that they are going to raise around 65000 crores uh, much depends on how foreign investors are going to look to lic mm. and especially in today's when war is taking place between yeah. ukraine and russia yeah uh, whether the foreign investors yeah would come into india yeah. and with uh, i mean inflation yeah. rising across yes. the world yes. uh, we have seen that in the last 3 or 4 months yeah. most of these foreign funds have Done. gone out of india yes. Yes. so whether they are going to invest that is a issue now we spoke so, about the policy holders now for, for looking at it from the other side from the institution itself Uh, what do you think are the consequences for LIC as an institution because of these changes? Its conduct, uh, you know. Uh, no, we 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 feel very strongly that the foundational objectives of LIC are going to be undermined. Yes. Number one, uh, LIC has been insuring people from across the segments. Yes. and that is why the premium size of lic mm-hmm. is much less compared to the private sector right. and private sector has been concentrating on the elite and the high net worth yes. individuals yes. and when the entire concept is to deliver profits to the shareholders yeah. lic's business model also has to change yeah. and already indications are there mm-hmm. uh, the officials of lic uh, and even in the internal discussions within lic there is a new thrust to, towards selling the non participating policies right. yeah. and by selling the non participating policies uh, it automatically means that you are trying to generate more value for the shareholders correct 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 shareholders yeah. so the smaller policy holders who normally do not want this uh, guaranteed return policies yeah. which mostly are invested in uh, the stock market yeah. like yeah. ulip and yeah. all yeah. who look to a safe instrument correct uh, and with them still endowment policy is the favorite yes. yes so that segment is going to be neglected okay so the business model is going to change uh, and secondly the how the lic is going to behave mm. post uh ipo yes because it spread in the rural areas is yes. something which is uh, yes uh, unimaginable yes so and but the cost of procuring a business from a rural area is yes. high yes yeah so whether rural area is going to be neglected yes and the lower size policies are going to be neglected yeah. because there is always a uh, what you call as a cross subsidization correct we 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 cross subsidize the lower policies yes. with the high sum assured yes yes, yes. So now i i i come to a related uh, issue uh, and this has been said again and again that lic's costs are very high particularly because of its extensive agent net, uh, network and what what and we we know uh, lic's agents are something like uh, 12 13 lakh 13 lakh so 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 what will be the consequences for the agents and what is uh, what is the uh, i mean the, the understanding that 
in common perception is perhaps that the agents are like brokers but that is not true in the life insurance business so so what will be the consequences for agents and therefore for policy holders prospective policy holders no lic's main strength is its agency force even today with lot of other uh, channels that have opened up to procure business yes. agents contribute more than 82% of the business mm. uh, and lic agent is not just an agent if you go to a rural area lic agent is also a financial advisor mm. and he is looked upon as a messiah in the rural mm. india mm. who would come to the help of people in need uh, so this strong force and even our adversaries they said that it is a gold standard yeah. Yeah. and the goodwill that the agent generate yeah. the brand that the agent generate cannot be quantified yes it is a huge asset to lic yeah. so to say that because of the agency force the cost of lic is increasing in fact in fact, in fact as you say this uh, the it is perhaps the reason why no there there are virtually no complaints of misselling by the life insurance corporation in india uh, as compared to the many 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 cases that you hear i mean i i heard a whole lot of cases from rajasthan for instance about the gross misselling of policies by private insurance companies that is basically because most of the private companies are promoted by the banks yes and yes. the bank assurance is their uh, strong channel yeah. and 65% of the business for the private sector comes through the bank assurance bank so assurance the, means uh, the selling, bank selling bank selling, selling the, bank selling yes, the yes, insurance yes, yes. Uh, policies yeah. and banks have been given a quota yeah. and to fulfill the quota lot of uh, mal practices take place yes, yes. and we have come uh, certain cases have come to light where poor people who go to create a fixed deposit yes. their yes. money is diverted yes. to sell the insurance yes. policy yes so all this yes does not happen with lic yes because the agent is a link between lic and the policy holders yes, yes. and secondly uh, our selling of insurance through bank assurance is very limited yes. and Not also even, i think lic has a has a, a, a system in place which ensures that agents uh, what the agents sell is what the insurance company wants so yeah. uh, so scope for mis selling is much less yes yeah, scope for mis selling is less yes uh, but yeah uh, compared to the private sector even if you look at the irda reports yes, yes. you would find that the complaints against lic is much lower yes. compared to the industry yes. the other private Uh, and uh, the complaint resolution also is uh, mm. nearly 100% in lic yeah, yeah. so that is the because the agent explains it and the, there is a i mean close relationship between the policy holder and the agent yeah, yeah, yeah. and that is the reason why the mis selling is much yes lesser non existent yes. compared to the private sector yes. but you were talking about the cost yeah. and this is absolutely a false propaganda because you, even if you read the irda report yeah. the operating cost of lic is much lower than the private sector mm -hmm. whereas the operating cost of lic is around 8.5% of the premium income yes. for the private sector it is around 12% yes. so yeah. and if you look at the quantum of the policies mm. 29 crore okay. individual policies okay. mm. and another 10 crore uh, mm. group policies okay. a single employee servicing the number of policies yes. when you compare it to the private sector Absolutely. it is yes. many many times yes. more yes. Yes. yes so the total strength of lic now is about 1 lakh 5000 employees yes. serving around 40 crore policies correct whereas in the private sector the total employment is around 2.5 lakhs mm -hmm. and they hardly service about 6 or 7 crore policies correct, correct. so the productivity is much higher yes, yes. and in terms of the claim settlement mm. performance which is the correct barometer for judging the efficiency of the institution yes. a life yes. insurance yes. company yes. we come up with flying colors yeah. Yeah. so all talk about this uh, 
yeah expense ratio is high yeah. is not true so the, so picking up from this uh, if the if the lic is reoriented in a certain way uh, what do you foresee as the consequences for life insurance in india uh see there is a criticism that insurance penetration in india is mm-hmm. low yeah so life insurance penetration is over 3% no it has reached the world average yeah. Yeah. uh but uh, insurance penetration is seen as uh, a percent the premium that we earn yeah. as a percentage of the gdp correct, correct. but many actually they have come to the conclusion that it is a wrong way of judging right. it uh because everything depends upon the disposable income in the hands of the people yes yes and if there is no disposable income yes so insurance yes. penetration is bound to be low yes uh i mean yeah according to the azim premji's report 90% of the households are less than 10000 rupees yeah what is the disposable income mm. so how are they going to invest yes Yes. despite this if you look at the total population in india yeah. and compare that to the risk the lives that are covered by lic yes. it is something which is phenomenal significant yes phenomenal yes. because uh, every indian is not insurable yeah. there are children yeah. Yeah. so the uh, insurance council itself estimates mm-hmm. that there are about 60 to 65 crore insurable population in india mm-hmm. if out of this 60 to 65 crores mm-hmm. if you are insured about 35 or 40 crores which means that around 60% correct you are already insured yes and that is not yes. insignificant yes. in a yes. 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 country where yeah uh, the disposable incomes are so low yes yes so that is uh, primarily because of the work that lic has done yeah. to spread the message of insurance yeah. across the country yeah now in the run up to this ipo there were two important clearances from regulatory bodies that the government had to get their get the ipo through one was the irda itself uh, and the second was the securities and exchange board of india for the capital markets yeah. Uh, clearance yeah now what has been uh, the the conduct of the irdai because the irdai is primarily responsible for protecting the policy holders interests and what has been the conduct of the irdai in 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 allowing this to happen uh, in this manner i ask this because irdai's con- conduct in the past have been particularly harmful to the lic i am talking about the sol- either it is there either with the solvency reserve issue uh, a few years back or even the even the time in i think it was in 2014 when lic was forced to withdraw all the policies and re- reissue mm-hmm. them again and it cause uh, it created quite a bit of chaos and uh, so I, what so, i want to ask is has irda i been uh, negligent or is it is it willful no the no, no. simple fact is that government does not attach any importance to the regulators there is no head for irda for yes. the last 2 years yes. secondly with the lic act being amended uh, the role of irda in respect of lic has been reduced how do you say after that? after that after this amendments have been brought about yes lic has brought a life insurance lic regulations mm. 2021 mm. uh those regulations have been notified by the government mm. and those regulations uh speak about the capital structure i know yes, yes. and they they say that irda has got the power only to s- give its observations okay on the proposals which lic sends mm. more than that it has no power no, but within the preamble of the irda itself no. it is it says that it is 
one of its uh, duties, primary functions is to protect the interest of policy holders. Now, as we have discussed, uh, there is uh, significant harm being caused to policy holders and IRDA has not acted. That is one. And secondly, this whole uh, way of valuing the, the embedded value as uh, principle as it has evolved uh, through the IRDA, sanctified by the IRDA, is particularly not applicable to the unique institution that LIC is. Yeah, they see. So these see, two uh, ways. I'll, I'll uh, complete where I was yeah. speaking. See, IRDA role is limited to giving its observations. Uh, and the LIC, while filing the returns with the SAB, also have to incorporate the observations of the IRDA. Mm -hmm. So IRDA, you don't have to take permission from IRDA to go for the IPO. Mm -hmm. The second issue as far as the policyholders' interests are concerned, IRDA for a long time has been campaigning mm. that uh, LIC has to fall in line with the general regulations of the IRDA. Mm -hmm. And the general regulations of the IRDA is that the surplus is distributed 90% mm. to the policyholders and 10% to the shareholders with the shareholder getting 100% of the Yes. Profits from the non-participating. Yes. So IRDA does not find any fault with this because it falls in line yeah. with the general uh, yes. yeah, policies. Yes, but I mean it is talking about the largest incumbent uh, insurance insurance company, and it is destabilizing it for the sake of uh, of you know making it fall in line with the rest of the industry, which is a much smaller uh, component and far more recent. So. Uh, is but that's why I said particularly I harmful to the LIC. The, 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 the simple thing is that everything is today related to the politics that is being played out in the country. Yeah. And I don't think that no regulator is independent in India today. Yeah. 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 And every regulator uh, is being told what is to be done. Mm -hmm. So whether in it fact, is uh, a Reserve Bank of India or IRDA or SEBI, you look at this, government gives a suggestion or a directive to the SEBI that LIC prospectus yes. which runs to about 652 yes. pages within three weeks yes. you have to approve it. Yes. Whereas even for the normal uh, IPOs, for your less, lesser amount, I, and SEBI normally takes about 75 days. Yes. But here the SEBI is being forced to give its yes. approval Yes. Pass. Yes. So forget about the independence of the regulator. Yeah. No regulator is independent. Yes. Yeah, in fact, uh, the other thing that I raised was the IRDAI's uh, this whole uh, concept of what it has sanctified as the valuation process is completely, it completely misses the point that LIC is a completely different kind of animal altogether. And uh, it applies the same principles to this and therefore we have this problem with the valuation. No, valuation, see uh, the, the question is that the actuarial form, they say that they have followed all the guidelines laid down by the Actuarial Society right. of India. Correct. So IRDA does not lay, lay down how the company has to be valued. Yes. It has to be done by the actuarial society yes. and then this advisor actuarial form they said that we have followed all the guidelines given by the actuarial society of india yeah. uh, the question here is that for a long time iida has been asking lic to fall in line yeah. with its general regulation lic had been resisting on the ground that IRDA Act is a general act, mm. LIC Act is a special act. Correct. And in a legal a jurisprudence, mm. a special act mm. overrides the general yes. act. Yes. So yes. that is why LIC for a very long time resisted the issue of solvency margin. Correct. And Correct. when it says that we have a government guarantee on the yes. policy, yes. Yes. what is the necessity of a solvency margin? Yeah. But IRDA ultimately prevailed upon the government to direct LIC to do it. Correct. And even then LIC said that we will uh, provide for solvency from a future date. Yes. 
the policy sold after the IRDA came into existence. Correct. But IRDA forced LIC to make provision even for policies which were sold earlier to Correct. the IRDA itself coming into existence. Correct. So IRDA is, has, uh, I mean, not been kind to LIC that way. Yes. Yes. Though the fact is that some of the former chairmen of LIC were also the chairman of the IRDA that did not help the institution. Correct. Uh, and there is, though the government now, the basic, after this, one important issue that the private sector is going to take it up is that why the government should continue to give the guarantee for LIC policies. Correct, correct, correct. Though the government has not touched that aspect yeah. and the finance minister has uh, assured that policy of LIC are going to get the government guarantee. We are not sure how, how long it, it is going to in, remain. In the, the withdrawal of the guarantee will be, create chaos. It will create chaos. It will definitely. And and then yeah, the, the other issues also, that is why we are saying that you should not have gone for IPO. So when there are private shareholders, mm -hmm. how a state can give guarantee exactly. for their businesses too. Exactly. Yeah. So, so they, sooner or later there may sooner, be pressure. There is going, there is going to be pressure. There is going to be playing field. There is the going to be pressure. Playing field, uh, you but, might want those guarantees yeah. to be withdrawn. But as as of now, the government has guaranteed that you for all times to come, we will hold 51% stake in LIC yeah. and the sovereign guarantee on LIC policies will remain. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, we want to assure the policy holders of LIC that sovereign guarantee was never an issue with LIC right. because LIC never asked for any additional capital yes. Yes. or any bailout yeah. unlike many other institutions. Yes. That guarantee has never been invoked. That guarantee has never been so, invoked. Yeah. So the policy holder need not worry about this. Yeah. Their interest will be protected right. Right. Uh, by they remaining vigilant yes. Yes. and the employees trade unions yeah. who have been protecting their interests yeah and campaigning for their interests will continue to do so and ensure that their interests are protected. Yeah. So what is, what is the, uh, what are the plans of your union to, to raise this issue among policy holders and among the general public and what are the ways in which you see you can broaden this uh, struggle against... Uh, see, we, we, we have been campaigning among the policy holders and the general public we are educating them about the dangers of this finest institution being privatized in the long run and we are seeking their support for our struggle uh, at many places we have organized policy orders conventions mm -hmm. and all this uh, the government in order to overcome that campaign the government introduced the reservation for the policy order yeah, yeah. that is unlike any other company correct, correct. where Exactly. No stakeholder was given the yeah. reservation, yeah. here the policy holders, but 10% shares to the policy holder is not going to, see if all the policy holders of LIC apply, yeah. assume that they all apply, they will not get even one share. Correct. So Correct. that is a, Correct. just a eyewash. Yeah. The richer sections among the policy holders yes. are going yes. to corner this yes. and the poorer sections who pay a very low premium and who are they, not there in the share market uh, who are not there in the share market will yeah. not come yes. and even if you look at this uh, uh, shareholding pattern of these public sector banks yeah. Yeah. less than 5% are the retail investors Correct. Correct. so the remaining is with the big uh, yeah. shareholders or institutional investors yes. and that is bound to happen even here yeah. so the uh, the, though the government says we are giving a uh, opportunity for the shareholders to profit from the value LIC has created, yeah. it will benefit only a small section yeah. of the shareholder. Yeah. Uh, overall, the entire policy now is to privilege the shareholder over the policy holder. Yes. Rather than from the earlier policy yeah. of privileging the policy holders over the shareholder. Yeah. 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 So we are going to continue our struggle because we don't see that 5% at the end of the day. Yes. So our struggle is going to be prolonged. Yes. Uh, and we are confident that we are going to stop government at some time. Yeah. Because 
the political situation will not remain static. It is bound to change. Yes. And there will be much better opportunity. So, to what are the ways struggle. in which you are trying to broaden uh, the uh, struggle, even with or without, before or after the IPO? It's no, basic thing is public mobilization. Uh -huh. The second is uh, industrial actions within. Yes. yes. So, we as our organization has decided to register our protest uh -huh. on the opening of the subscription of LIC IPO by a one day strike yeah. and after that we are going to continue Yes. because uh, as an organization we have come to the conclusion that this is very important. Yeah. If we don't react, if we don't protest even knowing fully well that the government will not roll back this IPO, yes. 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 we want the history to judge us kindly. <laughs> history should not judge yes. us yes. that these people yeah. developed a cold feet. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. we want to lodge our protest and we are going to go What has been the strike. response of political parties to this the response, as an issue? See, the individual members of the parliament, they say that this is unnecessary, hmm. including from the BJP. We have met a large number of BJP members of the parliament. They say individually and some of them have also written to the finance minister and the prime minister yeah. saying that uh, employees union they came and explained and we go by their opinion. Yes, yes. The government can have a relook. Yes. Uh, but they say that ultimately when it comes to the parliament, mm -hmm. it is an issue of whip. Yeah. We have to go with the government. Yeah. But the opposition parties, mm -hmm. uh, a large number of them, almost every one of them, mm -hmm. they have been approached and they have said that what the government is doing is not right. Yeah. Yeah. And the government should have a relook. Yeah. So those processes will continue yeah. and we will continue our struggle, there is yes. no yes. question of, it will be a long drawn struggle, we will yes. continue that struggle. Yes. 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 Thank you very much. Okay, thank, thank you, you Sri.